about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we Hi there and good afternoon and welcome to our latest um, live stream, politics live stream of 2022 and we're focusing today on devolution. I'm joined as ever by Kira and I believe we're, you're in some other far-flung part of the world this evening, you know, join, join the globe, globe-trotting contributor, <laughs> Kira, where are you? Berlin, is that right? Berlin, yeah. Yeah, keeping it, well, keeping it, uh, varied. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We should have perhaps um, done something on the European Union this evening or something like that. To uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> next time, just next fly time. me out somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, so devolution, really important topic, and we've recently had the advance information from the exam board that's come through, and it definitely includes this topic. So it's one that. You know, students sometimes struggle with a little bit. It's probably not necessarily on the top of everyone's list of favourite bits. I actually, I quite like it, I have to say, but it's not on everyone's <laughs> top of everyone's list of favourite bits. So um, let's get get cracking with it, shall we? Um, Going to start with an activity which, if you've joined us before over the last couple of sessions, you will have seen. It's called the Application Gallery. And what will happen is you're going to see a few images and what we'd like you to do is think about what those images might say about devolution. We've got a sort of debate question for this evening. Is devolution uh, good for democracy? Has it improved democracy in the UK, strengthened our democracy? And what I've tried to do with these um, images is I, when I've thought about them and what, what the images conjure up for me, is I've tried to think of something on both sides of that argument. So you could try and do the same thing too in the chat window. You could think something that that image presents that might be a strength of devolution and something that might be a weakness. So we'll bring the uh, 
images on. They're three very different images. Um, and we have, we should have some music. We haven't got some music. I've just seen that we won't have the music, but we will have a clock counting down. Um, so we will have a clock counting down. You can watch that in the right hand side. We can talk a bit about the images as we go through instead of hearing the uh, the music. Um, but let's start that clock going anyway. Now, you see, I've got some music, so I'm talking over the music, but I don't think you can hear it. So, but anyway, that's <laughs> like a bit of a nuisance. But, um, <laughs> you might just be able to hear it very distantly from my headphones. But um, so we have got three images here. What can we associate them with the term in terms of devolution? What are they? What are the three pictures? If you've got some ideas, you can put the number of the picture and then couple of ideas there as i say i'm thinking about strengths and weaknesses ways that it may have helped democracy ways in which it potentially may have hindered it in each case so number one oh here we've got some answers coming through which is always good to see um so number two someone's mentioned the scottish parliament and so absolutely it's somewhere in scotland so we can think about the scottish parliament what has the Scottish Parliament perhaps done in relation to uni it's the University of Edinburgh in terms of universities? Oh, I t the, t the clock has run out, but you can keep guessing up, so it's absolutely fine. Um, so we've got a picture of university there. Oh, Jane's mentioned Metro Mayors. Um, are, are you relating that? Which one are you relating that one to? Three, because we're in the Metro. I like that. That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a bit <laughs> of a good lateral thinking. But also, you know, perhaps specifically to do with transport policy, Obviously, on that particular picture, um, it's London. And you can think about the role of um, devolution to um, London and its role in transport, but absolutely the other metro mayors as well and the impact on transport in other areas. Harry's put devolving power of education to the Scottish Parliament. Absolutely. Yeah, so we have power over the education system. I mean, interestingly, Scotland had an, a different education system from... England and Wales prior to devolution um, which you know but what's happened now is there's more sort of democratic control of it so that's quite a good example um, of of kind of democratization as a result of devolution particularly with universities I might have been thinking perhaps something to do with fees number one Harry yes it is Northern Ireland um, mm -hmm. it's a picture a mural of some the sort of sectarian type murals here this is about sort of loyalist groups but I could equally have put one with, uh, you know, Republican um, groups with similar similar pictures, but different flags or what have you. Um, is there anything perhaps positive or negative to say about devolution to Northern Ireland that we could link to, to uh, number one? Um, so shall we have a look at what, what I came? So, oh, we've got... Uh, no uni fees for um, number two and yeah I think that was kind of in my mind really was the tuition fees situation mm. um, but I was thinking of it on both sides of the argument about um, you know strengthening democracy and and arguably not um, Jane allowing for power sharing between the unionists and the nationalists in Northern Ireland absolutely really well done so that's um, helped secure peace in Northern Ireland helped deal with some of the sectarian issues although you know there's a sort of you know there's also you know for example at the moment there isn't a first minister in northern ireland and in fact i saw a statistic today that said i think it's right in saying since devolution to northern ireland um it's been kind of dissolved more often than it's been <laughs> than it's been active the, the devolution to northern ireland because of problems with power sharing and so sectarianism kind of undermines devolution as well as devolution you know assisting with peace so I, I came up with a you know it helped secure peace in northern ireland part of the part of that good friday agreement was was um the devolution to northern ireland and, and clearly the situation in northern ireland is more democratic today than it was um prior to the good friday agreement um, but you could argue that sectarian prevents the better functioning government of devolution because you know, it regularly gets suspended and, and um, you know, direct rule is sort of regularly um, reinstated because of the 
parties not being able to uh, to to get on, um, and and partly because of the 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 requirement of power sharing. So, for example, the, the first minister um, just resigned, and you know automatically the deputy first minister has to resign in that situation. Um, you know, whereas normally you'd expect a deputy to take over if a first minister <laughs> designed that can't happen in Northern Ireland. You have to have you know, both sides, the unionists and the nationalists represented in the executive. So, so you know, the, that situation becomes, you know, is, is problematic as well as being a positive. Um, yes, the second one, I, I was going for university fees, although I liked the other part. Um, OK, um, so we've got... Um, and the second one, we've got free tuition fees in Scotland. Um, but also it relates, I think, to some of the issues regarding the West Lothian question, which I'm sure we will talk about later, probably more than once. But this issue about um, MPs um, from Scotland sitting in the UK Parliament and voting on English matters. And there have been various attempts to uh, to resolve that problem over the years, like English votes for English laws and that kind of thing. But there was a situation, of course, where, um, you know, to vote for tuition fees in the UK, uh, for sorry, in England and Wales, um, the majority to get that over the, over the, you know, to get that passed came partly from Labour Scottish MPs who weren't going to whose whose constituents weren't going to have to pay them, but they were voting for them for people in England. So that was quite controversial at the time. Um, so there are those issues. Oh, and we had a question about the Barnet formula in there as well, which is yeah, you know, a statement about the Barnet formula. Yeah, so how how the funding's arranged and who gets the funding and all that kind of thing. So lots of interesting stuff in there. We've also got you know a few people had some good ideas about the about the underground there i went with transport in london obviously that's a devolved matter but i think they're also leveling up issues there's been a lot of talk about transport in the rest of the country and whether devolution helps um secure the funding for that and helps uh you know um establish what local what, what local priorities are in terms of um transport and transport needs okay so well done some good ideas there um, we've got some uh, multiple choice questions coming up now just to get us thinking about some of this. There's some general knowledge, I suppose, here, but devolution related general knowledge just to get you get your game before we go through some of the more sort of exam focused type activities. So who was the first directly elected mayor of London? Was it Sadiq Khan, Boris Johnson or Ken Livingston? Uh, there's a comment in the uh, chat window that we should uh, resist levelling up as it's a Tory soundbite. Oh, I've actually I've heard all the uh, certainly the two main parties using this term levelling up, but I agree it is a uh, it sort of began in um, began in Conservative uh, materials in 2019. Yeah. Lots of people game for Ken Livingston, and you would be absolutely right. Well done. Okay, I'm sensing you're going to be very good at these ones. Um, who is the Metro Mayor for the Liverpool City Region? Is it Andy Burnham, Steve Rotherham or Joanne Anderson? I appreciated the uh, London-centric questions for a while there, Duncan. What happened yeah, to you? Yeah, a couple of them for you, but I thought, that's it now. <laughs> we're, okay. done, we're done with They're London. They're all about London now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we've, I've seen a couple of right answers coming through. Well done. Yeah, lots of people going for B. Steve Rotherham, you are absolutely right. It is. Um, Joanne Anderson is the mayor of Liverpool, and this gets a little bit confusing when we start to think about the, uh, the way devolved... Um, government, particularly city regions and things like that, and the metro mayors um, co coexists alongside existing structures of local government. Okay, what I'm not oh I've I wrote this and then I realised I'm going to have to say it. My Welsh so I apologies massively to anyone Welsh watching. Um, what is Senith Cymru? I hope that's somewhere close to right. Senedd Cymru, officially known as in English, is it A, the Welsh Parliament, B, the National Assembly for Wales, or C, the Greater Welsh Authority? 
What do we think? Any ideas? I've seen had one answer come through so far. As a little hint, although the person the the person who uh, that the, the couple of right answers that have come through so far didn't need the hint because they're getting it correct. Um, it did change in 2020. Yeah, well done. Lots of people coming through correctly with a uh, the Welsh Parliament. It was the National Assembly for Wales until 2020, um, but on gaining more powers, it officially became a Parliament. Who was the first directly elected mayor for West Yorkshire? Was it Dan Jarvis, Tracy Brobin, or Richard Bergen? Any ideas? With the London one, of course, they were they had all been London mayor, whereas only one of these has been the uh, directly elected mayor for West Yorkshire, because there's only been only been one. Uh, I've got a I can see an answer. Anyone else want before I reveal? Let's see. Any others? Yeah, a few right answers coming in. Well done. It is um, Coronation Street's finest. And um, oh, sorry, I'm going backwards. And I think this is the last one of these um, multiple choice questions. We'll hand over to Kira. Who was the first first minister of Scotland? So by that I mean the, the when it was first devised as a role. Was it Nicola Sturgeon, Alex Salmond, or Donald Dewar? Seen an answer coming through. Oh, someone's corrected themselves, I think. A um, few different answers coming in there, um, but a couple of you going correctly for Donald Dewar. Um, so there was a you know, pretty healthy Labour lead in the Scottish Parliament initially, um, and then uh, so there's Donald Dewar and then Henry MacLeish, uh, Labour first ministers. Then um, Alex Salmond was the first SNP First Minister, and then Nicola Sturgeon. That's how many we've had since 1998. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Kira now for a Stepping Stones activity. Cool, thank you. So for this, what we're thinking about is kind of the chains of analysis. So if we're going to put forward an argument for the question, has devolution made the UK more democratic? I want us to think about what would we use for analysis? So I'll show you um, to start with what I would put forward um, as an argument. So my argument is that devolution has been a success. And my judgment is it has made the UK more democratic. So devolution has been a success, thus making the UK more democratic. What I want you to do in the chat is can you put down the kind of middle bit of this small paragraph? What could I say to connect those two kind of um, argument, that argument, sorry, to that judgment? So what has made devolution more democratic, essentially, can we think about? You occasionally see in uh, students' answers, don't you, this, things that look a bit like this, and it's almost like, without the analysis, it's almost like a kind of begging the question, isn't it? Devolution's been a success because it's made it more democratic, but it's almost like devolution's a success because it's been successful and it's, it's you know, you need that <laughs> need that meat on the bones, don't you? What what do we mean Definitely. by it being successful? Yeah, I think this this is something that um, students sometimes struggle with. And the, the analysis is AO2, which I think is the hardest um, part of the mark scheme to achieve. And that's when you're really thinking about why. So what is it about devolution that has been, um, has, has made the UK more democratic? So it's not just about what we can see, it's more democratic, but what is it about it? So it's things like thinking about uh, what is democratic? What, what is democracy? And how has devolution kind of contributed to that? So the democratic criteria is quite a useful thing to think about. So even though that has been taken off of um, the advanced material, we still need to do think, we do still need to think in those terms about what is democracy and where we can see that. So we've got a good answer here. So yeah, excellent. Decentralized power away from parliament across England to increase representation of the country. 
for example, local councils where citizens are able to vote for people to represent them more locally. Brilliant answer. And there, there you can see a very clear uh, aspect of the democratic criteria, this idea of representation, right? So democracy is about being representative and devolution has definitely contrib contributed to that because we have local representation. So yeah, I would say then uh, devolution has been a success because it has resulted in more local control in regions, um, meaning that the people are better represented. So yeah, kind of really thinking about it in those sort of micro parts of the answer, not just the kind of argument and the judgment, but what is it about devolution that has been more democratic? And exactly as Alex said there as well, it is to do with representation too. So let's kind of think a bit more about evaluation too then. So we've got AO1, which is what Duncan did at the start, thinking about knowledge. AO2 is the analysis and AO3 is about the evaluation and the judgment. So obviously when we're talking about evaluation, we're not just talking about um, are you two-sided, right? Are you thinking about both sides, but also coming over to a judgment. So I'm going to put forward an argument and the evaluate is going to tell us what we're kind of going to do with that argument. So the argument is devolution will eventually lead to the breakup of the UK due to empowering local nationalism. So that's an argument that's been put forward. So let's see what we have to do with that argument. Do we have to agree? Do we have to add on to it? Do we have to disagree? OK, cool. So however, OK, so what what's an alternative argument that we could put forward here? So if somebody says that devolution will lead to the break of the UK because of local nationalism, what can we say to perhaps counter that? Maybe how is devolution going to strengthen um, the connections between the regions of the UK rather than actually divide it? So this might be a situation where perhaps our overall judgment in the essay is that devolution has been good for democracy. And then we've got this point here saying that, you know, it's going to be a bad thing. It is a bad thing. It's breaking the, in the UK up and we sort of need something to bring it back to our overall judgment. We've got, we've got a comment from radio. Yeah, so devolution helps mitigate the threat of independence. Fantastic. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that was one of the selling points initially. I'm, you know, Tony Blair certainly felt that it would, uh, you know, it would sort of reduce the threat from the uh, nationalist parties because it was, it was essentially giving people what they wanted without independence. Yeah, it's kind of offering that middle ground so that the calls for nationalism die down a bit, kind of. It keeps some people hasn't, satisfied. Hasn't worked in Scotland, but you know, that was the that was the theory. <laughs> well. It is the theory, yeah. Um, so, as Alex said, however, there are a few, very few parties in the UK that support independence from the UK. UKIP being the only party that supported the introduction of an English parliament. I think that's a really good point when we look at, and a nice example too, when we look at England, there's been very little calls for devolution inside of England. So, obviously, we have um, the sort of um, mayors in England, but there's not really a call for an English parliament, even though, as Duncan said, um, we had Scottish MPs voting on raising tuition fees, but um, English MPs had no right to vote on Scottish um, laws oh. such as their tuition fees. So there's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the, I mean, the Metro mayors, for the most part, didn't come from local demand in the way that, say, Scottish and Welsh parliaments did. It, I mean, when initially the referendums on having them, there was you know, people voted against or, or, or very low turnout, etc. There was going to be the North East Assembly. There was a referendum on that and hardly anyone bothered mm. to, uh, to yeah, vote on that. Interest. So there is a very little um, demand for it. Mm. Yeah, there, I is think the, there is the Northern Independence Party now, of course, but they, they, they've only uh, contested one by-election. They didn't get a huge vote, um, even though they had a former Labour MP as the candidate. So there, again, there isn't a lot of demand for this yeah and i think you know with england they tend to have benefited from the united kingdom a lot more right so um london specifically in the south specifically obviously um because they are the biggest population so whoever england votes for forms the forms the government essentially yeah. um and we've seen maybe the conservatives so we mentioned leveling up earlier 
that kind of promise that they've made to mm. the north that might be enough to kind of keep mm -hmm. that northern independence shout yeah. a bit lower. So Although quite not, a few if it, not if it doesn't materialise, I suppose. We've got some great answers coming through. Sunny. Well, let's see, yeah, on that one. Um, so, although in Scotland there seems to be a higher level of support for independence, in Wales, Plaid Cymru have not performed well. That's a brilliant answer, exactly. So we see actually that SNP have dominated um, Scot the Scottish Parliament, but not quite the same um, with the Welsh Nationalist Party and Wales. That's a brilliant answer, thank you. Um, encourage people to vote more on a national scale if they are also provided with local representation through other means. Therefore, local nationalism is less prominent. Very true as well, right? So it kind of, it, 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 it's in the sense that, that it's making it more democratic too. Um, allowed for devolved powers used in countries, respective bodies, which will make them want to stay in the UK as the support from devolution will keep the countries happy. And yeah, I think we've seen that and just to some of the examples that i gave which you've all mentioned already is we saw in 2014 scotland held the referendum they even had 16 year olds voting and um we saw actually that they voted to remain obviously now that britain's left the eu i wonder if that vote would have been quite the same um because the eu's position was that scotland wouldn't be allowed to join the eu as a separate member because they're worried about other countries kind of following suit um but yeah so scotland did vote to remain so they were happy in the union in that sense yeah we see as uh, someone mentioned as well the welsh nationalist party doesn't dominate welsh parliament and devolution in england has been very low demands for it uh, it will not lead to the breakup of the UK because it is arguable that providing Scotland greater powers closer to Devo Max can decentivise calls for independence. And yeah, definitely. And it's, it seems to be keeping people in the devolved areas quite happy. So I think, um, yeah, it's not necessarily going to lead to the breakup of the UK in that sense. Uh, so over to you, Duncan, for uh, some connections. OK, so we're going to now try and make the connection between devolution and a number of other things such as local representation conflict resolution parliamentary sovereignty leveling up although i'm not allowed to use that phrase <laughs> um, nationalism economic development which perhaps is referring to the same similar sort of concepts really um obviously we're not going to look at all of those we're going to roll the connection spinner we'll pick up two of these but i want you to try and make the connection between devolution whether it's a positive argument saying devolution's made things more democratic or on the other side of the argument that it's made it less democratic relating to two of these things we've actually talked about a lot of them already let's have a look so the wheel is spinning oh parliamentary sovereignty so can anyone think of a way of connecting devolution to parliamentary sovereignty in the context of this debate about whether devolution has made um, the UK more democratic or not Any thoughts? Okay, so um, Sonny's mentioned the Sewell Convention there, very good. So, I mean, the point being there, if people haven't, you know, not completely familiar with this, is a relatively recent idea is that essentially the UK Parliament will not normally, under normal circumstances, legislate for matters that are devolved matters for, the, uh, for Scotland or for Wales, um, which does lead to sort of suggesting, well, you know, Parliament isn't sovereign over the whole of the United Kingdom. Harry's put devolution undermines parliamentary sovereignty as it gives away the power from Parliament, hands it to other countries. Devolution can undermine parliamentary sovereignty, according to Radio. It leads to quasi quasi federalism. Very good. Um, yeah, absolutely, it could do. I mean, in theory, Parliament Westminster Parliament is still sovereign. It grants the devolution. It could theoretically 
um, remove it. And obviously we have had periods of um, direct rule in Northern Ireland. Um, Alex saying parliamentary sovereignty is diluted through intensified devolution. Sovereignty is not concentrating a unitary parliament for yeah, quasi-federalism. Um, Scottish referendum, Scottish Parliament had to send a request to the central government to hold it. Okay, yeah, that's that's the flip side. Obviously, the the boundaries of the United Kingdom is not a devolved matter, and so the you know Westminster would have to decide on holding a referendum on Scottish independence. Okay. I think as well the this just the argument just always to try and link it back to the question like if we're thinking about the fact that it has led in, in many ways to the decline of parliamentary sovereignty it is ultimately a good thing you could argue in terms of democracy so trying to obviously bring it back to those that kind of argument that's put forward because if parliament is less sovereign and we see the sovereignty being spread across the united kingdom that is ultimately more democratic because it's greater representation and less centralization as well. Okay. So yeah, and I've mentioned there that in you know, you know, legally the kind of de jure sovereignty lies with Parliament. But realistic politically, you can't really see a situation where where devolution might be reversed by Westminster. And as Kira says, from the if if everything else we've said about devolution being sort of positive for democracy is true then that that has to be a good thing really that that you know obviously the uk parliament is dominated by england it wouldn't be fair for a you know a party elected in england to essentially take away the democracy of scotland wales or northern ireland okay um we'll do we'll spin the wheel again economic development okay I've got other points coming into the chat window about um, the union you know arguably the unions become more fragile again if we sort of link that to to democracy I guess we could also link it to the idea of self-determination if people ultimately if a country wants to be independent should be allowed to to be so if the majority of people there want that to be the case arguably we could have a, could have that debate but probably not today um it's complicated in northern ireland though <laughs> yeah it does get complicated in northern ireland absolutely. if we link it to economic development then um the how has devolution impacted on economic development or how might it relate to it? What's a, a connection there? I might, uh, just because of the, the way the time's ticking on, I might reveal my my answers for this one. Um, so the devolved executives and the metro mayors have encouraged investment and development. That's one of the arguments in favour of devolution, particularly in England, where there isn't that demand um from a sort of patriotic sort of perspective um the the argument for it has often been in terms of um investment and development but also local priorities of how that money should be invested and where the development's needed yeah um in the chat window we've got london being a big hub for economic development so devolution's been good for london in that sense and again that's part of the reason why people say well devolution the city regions will be good for you know the sheffield and leeds and and, and manchester and liverpool and birmingham because you know it's work it's been it's done good things for for london and therefore it should do good things in those cities too okay well done i'm going to pass back to kira now for an activity called three, two, one. Cool. So what's going to come up is um, three kind of categories where you have to try and think about three things to represent um, reasons devolution has been a success, two things to represent why devolution has actually failed, and one awesome. thing which is an example of um, success of regional politics. So just try and you can start from number three, you can start from number two or one, how, however you prefer, but try to write down like a list of any of these uh, three categories. 
So three reasons devolution has been successful, two for its failure, and an example of the success of regional politics as well. I feel like my arguments actually lean towards one side here, but that's okay, because <laughs> we need to be decisive of where we sit on an argument anyway, even if we do have to consider both sides. So we can even think about what Duncan said in the last activity for why it has been successful. And then that good example from the first one for why it has some limits as well. Okay, so Alex saying successes come from greater representation um, and increased political participation, definitely, and economic development as well. Failure is the sanctity of the historic union. Yeah, very true. It's depending on kind of who you're asking there. Uh, deteriorated parliamentary sovereignty too. And I think that's a good point. As if you go, we go down that argument, the UK's democracy is one when Parliament is supposed to be sovereign. So are we undermining those principles? Is it right to kind of modernise it and change it in that sense? A really good argument. And yeah, we have seen a greater representation in um, the, the sort of uh, regions, although interestingly, not across the not across the board, actually, when we look at the metro mayors the participation has been fairly low there uh devolution so as, as uh, radio said devolution allows for cultural identity and national feeling in each part of the uk very true right so we do see that like the fact that in wales they're using welsh on their on their signs to try and kind of preserve and protect the welsh language so i didn't put that down but that is a really good point about protecting that cultural identity whilst being part of a bigger union so i think that's quite important uh, decisions being made at a more appropriate level fantastic and we see that with covid 19 policies for example how each of the regions were able to kind of put forward their own covid policies in order to kind of do what they felt was best for their country. Um, regional success, Scotland gave 16 year olds the right to vote in elections, which is better for political rep representation and extending the franchise. Fantastic. The fact that obviously that's not present across general elections, but in uh, the regional elections, that's been very powerful. Uh, Sunny said failures, so good, getting some balance, uh, provided more elections, turnouts are not particularly high and created a divisive nature of politics, Scotland and England on Brexit. Yeah. So Scotland voted to um, remain in the European Union. Obviously, England voted to leave. Not all of the cities and parts of England, though. Um, and yes, despite that, so devolution is supposed to give these regions more power. They were reluctantly, just like Northern Ireland as well, dragged out of the European Union against their kind of will there. So is it really giving them more power in that sense? Uh, oh, yeah, really good point. Didn't put that down either about um, proportional systems in local regions. So we're seeing more pluralism, fantastic, linked back to democracy. So obviously this is a synoptic paper, so really nice good, uh, key yeah. terminology to do that. Um, so local issues to be taken more seriously and greater freedom. And yeah, and I think having those more pluralistic voting systems does actually make people more engaged in democracy to kind of try to reduce the participation crisis that we're seeing in, in um, other elections. Um, so parts of the UK, such as Liverpool, London, Manchester, are able to have greater authority over transport. So good. We see that in the fact that on, sorry, it's London centric, but in Transport <laughs> for London, um, Sadiq Khan was able to enforce the ma mask mandate. So Boris Johnson removed masks from um, public transport, but Sadiq Khan was able to say, well, in London, the tube is incredibly busy, so we want to keep the mask mandate there. It's a really good point. Uh, so yeah, my third point, um, support by all major parties, 
Uh, I think what, what I was trying to kind of say there is that it's a consensus. So because it's a consensus, we're not likely to see any manifestos which will take away uh, devolved powers. So that argument that technically, because the constitution's uncodified, a, a government could remove the power, but the fact that it's supported across all the major um, UK political parties suggests that that probably wouldn't happen. Um, so I would say that means that it's been successful because yeah. of that. I don't know if that makes sense, yeah. yeah I think um, it does. Shall we look at the twos? Uh, yeah, so the yeah. twos, the kind of failures or the limits of it, rather. Uh, the West Lothian question, so obviously um, the fact that uh, the English, uh, England is left out um, from devolution, <laughs> seen as somewhat of a loser in it. So even the fact that education maintenance allowance is still present in Scotland and Wales and not in England, um, but also the fact that yeah, turnout has been higher on the regional bodies, but when it comes to the metro mayors, it's been fairly low. Uh, yeah, more divisions. There's, I think there's definitely some resentment in England about um, the the way that more money is spent on people in Scotland compared to people in England too. Um, and then the one, which I kind of did speak about this as well already, but examples of success in regional politics I'd say co the COVID policies are really good examples to, to add to an essay. The fact that this has been obviously quite a crisis and people in the regions have been able to respond to it, how they felt fit rather than kind of everybody being t subject to what Boris Johnson felt was right. Um, it was actually what did the people in each region decide would work best yeah. for them. So things like Wales had circuit breakers for their schools, for example, mm -hmm. um, rather than just being kind of held to the conservative mandate of what they felt was right as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's over to you, Duncan. For yeah, I was just I was just going to quickly say, on terms yeah. of sort of the powers of the devolved bodies, an interesting thing this week with um, Cressida Dick's um, uh, resignation, in that you know ultimately it was because Sadiq Khan didn't have confidence in her despite the fact that boris johnson expressed his confidence in her so it's interesting that the you know, the metropolitan police chief although not you know directly necessarily fully answerable to the you know to um to to the london assembly and in, in that way you know was ultimately she she went because of um sadiq khan's lack of confidence in her so that's that was quite an mm. interesting development i thought this week um, sorry, yes, we've got one last activity, um, which is my favourite activity, but sometimes people struggle with it a little bit, so I'll explain the rules first of all. So it's called Word Smash. It's a bit like um, Answer Smash on Richard Osman's House of Games. You get a picture and you get a clue. The picture has nothing to do with devolution. The clue does, and you smash the two words together. So in this case, neither of them have anything to do with devolution. We've got an elephant, we've got Antarctica. So you smash them together to make Elephantarctica. So in other words, the end of the first word is the start of the second one. So you smash them together. Hopefully it'll make sense when you go through them. This one, I've decided to keep it a little bit easier by not blanking out the uh, make of the tuna chunks, which I nearly did. We've got Tam Diel's question about the impact of devolution on Westminster. Any ideas what the word smash could be here? So... Do we know what Tam Diel, Tam Diel's question was? So uh, Alec has absolutely got the uh, correct answer to the right-hand side of the uh, thing. It is the West Lothian question. Um, and yeah, Robin there is coming with the West Lothian question as well. All of you get in the West Lothian question. Because of the answer smash bit element of it, the word smash bit of it, it's John West Lothian question. But yes, absolutely, you got the important bit right. So well done. Very good. Tam Diel was the MP for West Lothian, which was why it got that name. OK, the next one. Proposal to complete devolution to the nations of the UK. It has been mentioned and linked to one particular political party at... Not the last... Well, it might have been in their last manifesto, but they didn't do particularly well in the last election. They were very, they'd been sort of replaced by another party, but in previous elections, one party had particularly talked about this. Um, so we know there is already devolution to Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. I don't know if you recognise the character on the left. It's I'm after a character name rather than a rather than the actor's name. It is Rowan Atkinson. But 
Could be Devo Max. It's not Devo Max. Mm. Johnny English. Sonny has recognised the uh, <laughs> has recognised who the character is. So it is Johnny English. Does that help us? What that proposal might be to complete devolution to the nations of the UK? It was mentioned earlier that it had been a UKIP policy. Um, also, the English Democrats and a few other minor parties came up with similar similar ideas. So Johnny English is right. So it's English something. Yeah, it could have been it could have been Johnny English votes for English laws, but we were going for Johnny mm -hmm. English. Um, John, oh, it should be Johnny English. Yeah, devolution, Johnny English Parliament, either of those. But yes, or English votes for English laws. Lots of different ways we could have gone with that. Devolution to England or devolution to the English regions. There are various types of um, things. English Parliament, Sonny went with. Yeah, lots of ways we could have finished that one off. <laughs> but um, And our last one, the Northern Irish Assembly Building. It looks a it's looking a bit like that outside here at the moment. Oh, we've had a right answer for the important bit of the uh, <laughs> of the bit of the, of the thing. Absolutely, and in fact, you could just go with that entirely, couldn't you? Yes, you could. Robin's done it that way. Yeah, quite a few people have come in correctly with Stormont. I was going for Thunder Stormont because it's a thunderstorm and Stormont, but you're quite right. Oh, well done, Sonny. Got the had the same daft idea as me. Well done. Um, <laughs> so very good answers there, and more importantly, very good answers throughout the session. Some really good, detailed answers there. Well done. Just to remind you that there are lots of resources on our website and available from our uh, online shop to help with these uh, this course and these um, topics. So if you've got a smart device, you can scan that. QR code, lots of um, study notes and activities uh, on there, and there are a range of resources available, including our revision guide and revision flashcards for component two. Okay, well done, guys. I'm going to come back to me and Kira to say goodbye. Um, thanks very much. Oh, there's a question there. Is there a global politics set of revision cards? I can tell you that they are in production. So they will, <laughs> they will be available very soon. Okay, um, there's a question there about AQA politics support. We we've been focusing on edX, edXL, but it has to be said the course content, the knowledge, is very similar between the two. So the the assessment style is quite different, and where some of the topics fall in terms of what they're sort of put together with, um, is slightly different. Um, and there isn't the global politics on for AQA, but the actual content was kind of a determined centrally by central government so they you know it's all the same um key thinkers and the same sort of topic areas on both boards so a lot of the content topic content stuff you could use us for that even though our focus has been at excel okay so enjoy berlin kira uh, the rest of your time there and uh, we'll see you next week and we'll let you know what topic we're going to be covering but we're going to be focusing for the next few sessions on issues relating to that advanced information. Okay, see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Cool. Bye. Thank